Hi guys, welcome to a new video. In this one I'm going to be showing you the process of a commission that I did for my friend Beth of a witch in a kind of library type room with books flying all around her while she's brewing a potion. So this is Beth's specifics for what she wanted for the commission. She also wanted to add some cats in there as well. Beth has a black cat who's really cute and she wanted her in the picture as well as just some general black cats all around the witch as well. And so it was really fun to add in all the different details. This piece has been a bit of a saga, if I'm honest, because I did do an original version of it quite a while back, and unfortunately I messed it up and I really didn't like it. I didn't feel like it was good enough to give to my friend because my watercolour skills weren't up to scratch at the time, and I just didn't know how to fix my mistakes, and I actually got really low about my traditional art skills, and I said to some of my friends, I don't think I should be doing traditional art because I'm just not good enough at it, I can't learn how to do this, I can't learn how to fix my mistakes. And they said to me, you can't just give up because you've messed up this one picture. You have to take what you've made a mistake on and learn from it and then put it into your next piece. And so what I did was told Beth that I would need some extra time if that was okay to work on this and she was really great with it and so I put it away for a little while. I've been doing a load of practice as you might have seen. I haven't posted all of them as videos because obviously they were just practice pieces so I've been doing loads of different pieces with watercolour. I've used several different types of watercolour and then eventually I came back to this and picked it up again and I'm so much happier this time around. So the original was done in just standard fine liners and I decided I wanted more line variation. So you can see me at the beginning working on a light box. The reason I'm getting my hand in some kind of weird positions is because the paper that I've used, which is the Dale Rowney mixed media paper, is so thick that when you're working on it with a light box you have to press down really hard to see the lines underneath. And so I used the Kurataki Zig flexible fine liner for the new version to get that flexible line width in. At this point, I think Kurataki should just, you know, sponsor me maybe, just to shout out a suggestion. So uh, I decided to use that one for the new line art to build up some more depth in the lines. And then I used several different types of watercolors. Originally, I was using the Sakura Koi as a base but they're not light fast, so I just use them as a very light layer on the base. They're more pastel-y and they're a little bit more chalky as well. I do like them, but I won't be using them on kind of commission pieces now because of the whole light fastness thing. So on top of that, I then built up with the Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolours and the St. Petersburg White Knight watercolours as well. I've taken into account a lot of the things that people told me on my last video where I painted Jester with the White Knight's watercolours. I definitely got a telling off for using uh, white in my watercolours, which I won't be using anymore. I was using it to lighten up my colours, but of course I forgot that watercolours are transparent and the whole point is that you build up the transparency. And so thank you to everyone who reminded me of that because I was too busy kind of trying to make my colours opaque but then lightening them with white and it just didn't work and I need to remember to just steadily build up layers and make my colours darker or lighter that way. So I tried that with this illustration, just continuously building up loads and loads of layers and I think it worked better and I'm really pleased with the kind of deep colours that I ended up with in some parts of the illustration. I tried out washes for the beginning. I used a really pale yellow wash for the moonlight and then pale lilac for the shadows and also an orange for the fire and then built up from there and integrated those colours into the rest of the illustration. This isn't the kind of subject matter that I usually draw so it was really different for me. I don't recall the last time I drew a witch if ever and I really like the rustic look of the background. I'm really happy with how the kind of wooden beams came out and the hanging bottles and the terrariums and it was just really fun to add in all those little details because it's not something I do very often. Obviously with my current project it's a sci-fi project so there's not exactly rustic wooden beams and hanging plants everywhere <laughs> so it was really nice to explore that and to kind of try and build in textures into the different areas of the illustration like the cauldron and the bucket and onto the stone walls as well. I really enjoy painting the stone walls. I also tried to play around with the composition in adding the kind of magical potion thing, whatever that is that's flying around the room, and I really liked adding the flowing lines to kind of try and build into it and draw the viewer's eye around the picture. 
I finished the effects of the potion off with a fine tech gold that my friend Kate sent to me. So thank you again, Kate, for that. I really like it. She actually sent it to me and said specifically she thought it would work for this piece. So I tried my best to build it in there and I also did add it onto the buckle of the hat and a few other things as well. I also really enjoyed drawing the ghosts coming out of the witch's hat. I don't particularly know why there are ghosts coming out of her hat or why her hat has teeth. I just thought that was kind of a cute idea. I thought it was a bit quirky and I just really enjoyed drawing it and playing around with the transparency of the ghosts. I still need to work on that because the transparency didn't quite look how I planned it to, but it's again something that I can work on in the future. I was really grateful for Beth's patience in waiting for me to get this done. I did give her a discount. I wasn't gonna make her pay full price while she was waiting for a while for me to get my practice in and get the piece up to standard. So I'm really glad that she was happy to wait and I would like to thank her for giving me the opportunity to paint this because it's, like I said, it's not something I would usually do. It's really good to step out of your comfort zone and it just kind of pushes you to try new things when you wouldn't normally have thought of them yourself. And so I feel like I have built up my skills with watercolour quite a bit recently. I've still got a long way to go, but I feel more comfortable with them. I feel a lot less scared, which like I said in my video about beginning artists, something that I used to struggle with was feeling scared of using traditional media because I was too used to digital and I was always afraid of making a mistake. But now, I kind of know how to work with a mistake instead of starting over like I used to and it just feels a lot more enjoyable to use this medium so that's ultimately what you want. You want to enjoy what you do, you want to enjoy your artwork and the supplies that you work with so I'm happy that I feel I'm getting there now. I have plans to try out some different medium like I want to try gouache I don't know how to say that at all but hopefully you know what I mean but because it's so opaque I'm really nervous about using that so at some point I'm gonna give that a go but uh, yeah at the moment I'm really enjoying watercolor so thank you to everyone who's given me advice on it so far and thank you to my friends who have encouraged me to not give up with it because uh, you're worth your weight in gold thank you so much so I really hope you enjoyed the process of this video please let me know if you have any comments or feedback in the comments below and I hope to see you next time bye